Today, I'd like to take you to the Asia-Pacific region, where electricity demand is forecast to increase by 70% by 2040 and to more than double by 2050. To maintain its path to widespread prosperity, the region to Australia's north will have to keep pace with rising electricity demand. And yet, if we're to avoid catastrophic climate outcomes, we'll have to meet height rising demand whilst eliminating emissions. We know that means significantly increasing the share of renewables in the global power mix. Herein lies the challenge. Many of the countries in the region have skyrocketing demand, but they also face great hurdles in the energy transition. Densely populated and therefore lacking abundant land, and often lacking the high quality renewable energy resources uh, found in more remote locations, these countries have found it challenging to build the scale of solar and wind farms required to meet the growing load resulting from electrification of their economies. Australia is a different story. With our population largely concentrated in urban centres along the coastal perimeter and with boundless plains, we enjoy an abundant solar energy resource. 58 million petajoules are falling on Australia every year. That's sufficient to power the entire global economy 100 times over. Of those 58 million petajoules of energy received in 2020, Australia converted just 400 petajoules to electricity. Indeed, even if 100% of Australia's primary energy use was met with solar, we would only utilise 0.01% of that available resource. We confront an irony then, in which one of the region's richest renewable energy resources, Australian sunshine, has been inaccessible to those with the greatest demand. Without the ability to bridge the distance over land and sea, Australia has been unable to connect to the region and supply this abundant energy to the demand centres in our, in our neighbours. This, however, is about to change. Today I want to share with you the story of how technological advancement across several fields has aligned to mean that Australia can finally share its vast solar resource for the world's benefit. It is in many ways a hidden story, several decades in the making in which key technologies have slowly but surely improved to the point of unlocking extraordinary potential. The ever-increasing efficiency of solar panels and as well as battery storage is a key part of this. Much of that work is thanks to institutions such as the University of New South Wales, which has led the development of photovoltaic technology since the 1980s. However, it is the evolution of high voltage direct current submarine cable technology that has now enabled Australia to connect to the world. Transmission voltages continue to increase, reducing losses. Advances in material science and more sophisticated modelling of the natural environment have resulted in a robust and reliable means of transmitting electricity between continents. Maximum cable lay depths have increased allowing cables to traverse previously inaccessible subsea terrain. For the United Kingdom and Europe, much of this will be familiar. Europe's grid connects 400 million customers across 24 countries. The UK government understands the opportunity. Prime Minister Johnson announced that capturing the energy generated from wind would be the number one priority in the UK's 10-point plan for the Green Industrial Revolution. The UK is continuing to drive this through the Green Grids Initiative, building regional connections and working to establish large interconnectors to transmit renewable electricity. The Indian government, under Prime Minister Modi's One Sun, One World, One Grid program, has provided the vision for global interconnectedness, starting with, uh, with the India Oman project. The Asia-Pacific can also adopt this regional interconnectedness approach. Current geopolitics, technology and economics mean that we have now reached a tipping point. Cables can now be deployed over greater distances and in deeper waters than ever before.
overcoming engineering challenges once thought insurmountable. Connecting grids in the Indo-Pacific will allow rich yet remote sources of renewable energy to be harnessed and dispatched to the distant load centres, whether it's Australian sunshine, Mekong hydropower, Vietnamese wind or Indonesian geothermal. These interconnection projects will enable cities and regions to access large-scale affordable electricity to support electrification of the economy and economic growth. Suncable's planned Australia-Asia Powerlink is the first intercontinental interconnector, the first of a kind, the first of many. The Australia-Asia Powerlink will generate solar energy at our 17 gigawatt solar precinct in the Barclay region of the Northern Territory. Store it in the world's largest battery and transmit that energy 800 kilometres to Darwin and then 4,000 kilometres to the load in Singapore. The project will supply 800 megawatts of power to Darwin and deliver up to 15% of Singapore's total electricity demand. We will be fully operational in both markets by 2028. To ensure this outcome, I am delighted to announce that we have brought together a global consortium of engineering and advisory firms to form the integrated project delivery team to deliver this world-leading project. The firms include Bechtel, Hatch, <coughs> SMEC and their parent company, Sabana Jurong from S Singapore, Marsh and PwC Australia. We know the benefits of cross-border electricity trading will be immense. These include enormous export opportunities. Our first project represents the equivalent in, rev in export revenues of the entire Australian dairy industry. The growth of next generation industries like data centres and green manufacturing, all of which require dispatchable, competitively priced renewable electricity and strategic manufacturing opportunities in the renewable energy supply chain of which there are many. Connecting cities to large-scale, affordable, dispatchable electricity to support long-term, sustainable, industrial-sized economic growth is possible, and we are doing it. It will require regional and global cooperation from government, business, and the communities in which we operate. This is the opportunity of the century to save the climate, accelerate economic growth, and leapfrog into the industries of the future.